Hello everyone. In this presentation, we will discuss the operation of master slave JK flip flop. In the previous class, we discussed the operation of JK flip flop. We use JK flip flop because there are some disadvantages in D flip flop and SR flip flop. In SR flip flop, as we already know, when the input S is equal to one and R is equal to one, the output is unpredictable. and we don't use that so in order to overcome this disadvantage we use jk flip flop this is the logic diagram of the jk flip flop which is negative edge triggered the jk flip flop overcomes the problem of unpredictable state in sr flip flop by making use of this feedback but in case of jk flip flop we find that when the value of j is 1 and the value of k is 1 and when the clock is high then the output of the flip flop keeps on changing continuously from 0 to 1 this problem is known as race around condition or racing and racing is definitely not a desired output because we cannot predict the output in this case so we don't want to use racing in anything so what we want to use we use toggling there is difference between racing and toggling racing is an uncontrolled phenomena whereas toggling is a controlled phenomena so we will have to overcome this problem of racing which is found in case of jk flip flop there are certain ways by which we can overcome the problem of racing in jk flip flop these ways or conditions to overcome racing are as shown here the first condition to overcome racing is by keeping the clock half time period less than the propagation delay of the flip flop that is if capital t is the time period of the clock then we will have to keep t by 2 less than the propagation delay of the flip flop but practically this method is not used so the second method is edge triggering we use this method of edge triggering to overcome the problem of racing and the third method is by using a master slave operation the master slave operation is the same as negative edge trigger flip flop and this is the most important method to overcome racing in case of jk flip flop so let's now see how the master slave jk flip flop operates as you can see in this figure this is the circuit of a simple jk flip flop and we also saw that in case of jk flip flop the problem of racing is because of this feedback so we will have to design a circuit so that we can eliminate the effect of this feedback so for this we have to add another stage similar to this stage and we will remove this feedback and we will draw the circuit as shown in this figure here we have added a circuit similar to this circuit and we have connected the feedback from this stage to the first stage this is the circuit of a master slave jk flip flop using nand gates from this circuit we find that these two circuit these two stages are similar to each other this is known as the first stage and this is known as the second stage this stage is called the master this stage is called the slave and that is why the circuit is known as the master slave jk flip flop here we find that the input inputs are jk and clock to this master and the output of the master is q and q bar and the output of the slave is q n and q n bar so we see here that a clock has also been added from the first stage 
through a inverter to the clock of the second stage. Now there are two things to remember in this master flip-flop. The first thing is the feedback that is how to connect the feedback and the second most important thing is the clock. So we will see what is the advantage of complementing the clock to the second stage. Let us now see how this circuit works and we will also see what is the effect of complementing this clock. Now for example, suppose the value of j is kept 1 and the value of k is also 1 and the clock is high. So in this case the master will be operational because clock is high and the slave will not be operational because the clock of the slave is low. So the output of the slave will remain the same as before that is the slave will keep the memory. Now Q will change because this master is operational because its clock is high so the value of Q will change. The slave is not operational so its output will remain the same as before because when the clock is high here it is low here. Now similarly when the value of clock is kept low then in that case the clock of the slave will be high. So the master will not be functional in this case and the slave will be functional and the output of the slave will change. But there is one important thing to note here that even when this output changes we are having feedback from this stage to the first stage but because the clock is low so the output of the master does not changes. That means that we are not having any effect of feedback in this case that is we have eliminated the effect of feedback and hence we have eliminated the problem of racing. So what is actually happening in the circuit is that instead of output changing continuously from 0 to 1 here the output changes once in a clock cycle. This is the advantage of this circuit and that is which is what is called as toggling. In order to understand it in a better way we will make a clock and we will also plot the output of the master and the output of the slave. Here we find that the clock is changing as a function of time and in this case we have kept the value of j and k equal to 1 throughout. Now we will plot q that is the output of the master. So we find that when the clock is high, when the clock is high we find that the master is operational whereas the slave is not. So when in this case the master is operational let us assume that the value of q was low before the clock is high. So as soon as the clock is high then the value of q will also become high because the master becomes operational so the value of q will also become high because it was low earlier and for what time it will become high? It will be high for this entire time because the clock becomes low then this state will be stored because when the clock becomes low then in that case the master is not operational. So even when the clock becomes low the master will retain the same state and the state was high in the previous case. So it will be stored like this. Here we see that when the clock becomes high then the master will be operational. So it will become it, the value of q will change from 0 to 1. It will remain the same. Now even when the clock becomes low the master is not operational so it will retain the same state. Again when the clock becomes high in the next cycle then again the master will be operational so its output will change from 1 to 0. Again this will remain the same up to this clock cycle. Similarly 
when again the clock becomes high the state of the flip uh, master will change and so it will again change from 0 to 1 and it will remain the same till this cycle so the output of the master will be as shown here now again we find that when the clock is high it will become low like this then again it will become high so we see that for a clock cycle we are having for a clock cycle we are having toggling that is it is high then it is low again it is high again it is low for one clock cycle it is high for another cycle it is low for another clock cycle it is high and low like this this can be used directly now we will try to find out the output qn that is the output of our slave and let's see what we are having when the clock is high when the clock is high the first case it means that the slave is not operational the master is only operational slave is not operational because we are complementing the clock so the clock is low here so in this case we will have zero so even when the clock goes high the value of qn will remain zero because here supposing that before the clock goes high the value of qn was low so even when the clock becomes high the value of qn will be zero now when the clock goes low when the clock goes low when the clock goes low then the clock here will become high because this clock is con connected through an inverter to this stage so when we keep the clock low this clock will be high and so the slave will be operational in this case and its output will change and so when the clock becomes low the value of qn will become high because it was low before and it will remain the same up to this clock cycle and again when the clock becomes low the state of this slave will change so we find that once in a cycle the clock will be high output will be high then again it will be low then again the output will be high then again it will be low so we can see clearly that we have overcome this problem of racing that is the output is not changing continuously from 0 to 1 in this case but it is changing only once in a clock cycle that is what we have done we have eliminated the problem of racing in this case and this is what we call toggling so if I write the values for our output here that is when the clock is 1 the value of j is 1 and k is 1 then the output will be qn bar this is what we call toggling and it is used in the counters now let us see what is the symbol of the master slave jk flip flop as you can see from this figure this is the symbol for a master slave jk flip flop there are three inputs to this master slave that is jk and clock this clock is negative edge triggered these are the two inputs qn and qn bar these are the preset input and the clear input so this is this symbol for master slave jk flip flop now let us see what is meant by racing we have drawn a clock pulse here in case of jk flip flop when the value of j is 1 and the value of the input k is also 1 and the clock becomes high then we find that the output of the jk flip flop keeps on changing continuously from 0 to 1 then again 0 then again 1 then again 0 then again 1 then again 0 then again 1 then again 0 and then again 1 that is when the clock is high and the value of j is 1 and the k is 1 
then in that case the output will keep on changing continuously from 0 to 1 during this positive or high clock. Again when the clock goes low then the value will be output will be 0. Again when the clock goes high then again the output will keep on changing continuously from 0 to 1. This problem is known as racing and it is faced in case of JK flip flop. So in order to remove this problem of racing we use this master slave JK flip flop and we saw how we can eliminate this problem of racing by using this master slave operation that is we have eliminated this problem of racing and we have converted it in, into toggling. So I hope you understand the operation of master slave JK flip flop. So that's all for this presentation.